Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and welcome back. We are today we're continuing on with our management roles, key management roles. So we've gone through planning, gone through the levels of planning and the stages of planning or the planning process. And now we're going to look at organizing. Now I'm redoing these videos because of last year's exam, the 2013 exam. So I'm redoing these videos to try and fit in uh, a little more with uh, what they're expecting in last year's exam. So we'll just so I'm going to break these videos up into one video each. So they'll be pretty short and sweet, but um, it's still stuff that's really crucial and that you need to know. So first of all, organising is a process of coordinating an organisation's human, physical, and financial resources to help achieve objectives. So every manager, whether it be an operations manager, HR manager, marketing, etc., etc., what or a divisional manager, whatever they are, they have resources at their disposal disposal and they have to organize or co coordinate those resources in the best way possible to achieve the organization's objectives. So they can organize many things, so obviously human resources, so the people, their employees, meetings, finances, machinery, timelines, um, daily rosters, etc, etc. So there's you know, a massive amount that they need to organize day to day and also for medium and long term goals. So what we can do, we can break uh, the organizing up into a multi-step process. So um, some of your textbooks will go into you know four or five steps, but essentially it comes down to three main steps. That's where the manager has to determine the work that has to be done. So they've got to decide, well, if this is our goal, what actually needs to be what actually needs to be done to achieve that goal. Then they can group the activities into similar tasks. So that tries to streamline the activities so that they can make the most efficient use of, um, of resources. So they're trying to, I suppose, divide the total workload into activities that can be performed logically so that you know, they sort of work together. So rather than having you know, 10 different people doing 10 different tasks where they can actually streamline them into you know, one or two people doing a task for a particular, um, in order to achieve a particular objective. And then the important thing then is they need to allocate, uh, allocate, allocate those tasks and delegate authority. How much they delegate is entirely up to the manager and that will depend on the kind of management style they have and we'll get into those later on. Um, but essentially, they need to allocate those tasks to certain individuals. Now, in terms of task allocation, managers can't do everything themselves. Some of them would like to, there's no doubt. Um, but the really strong managers are essentially leaders and they just they allocate tasks to um, their subordinates or to their employees. So they need to delegate tasks to employees in order to get all the work done because we're talking about large organisations here, remember. It's not just some tiny, small organisation where there's only a few things to do. These are large organisations where there's a lot of work to do. So here's just some of the ways. Now, there's many different ways to allocate tasks. Um, here's just some of the ways. First of all, you've got to look at it and say, well, you can allocate the task to a particular individual or you can allocate the task to a group or a team. So here, we can look at it and say, well, you're going to allocate, the manager can allocate the task to an authority, um, so all the authority of the task and decision making to an experienced team member. So they go, well, this is an important task, so we want to give it to someone who's really experienced. Or they could give the authority and decision making to a team and so that they work as a team so and as the team they can make decisions on how to do particular tasks or what they can do is also give authority and decision making to less experienced team members but have a mentor there available for them to to seek advice from now the reason they would do that is because allocating tasks and delegation is a way of improving employee skills so if they're less experienced the only real way to improve their abilities is to not throw them in the deep end, but to give them tasks that are challenging and that they may not have done before, but then still having a mentor there available to provide guidance. So there's some of the ways we can allocate um, tasks. For all activities and questions on today's topic, then come over to teachingbubble.com.